Good morning, good morning, good morning, Jamaicans.com. How are you? I'm so happy to be with you. It's Saturday, and you know what that means. It's your girl, Suzette Speaks, coming to you live and direct. We always want to encourage you to chase the real you. I love bringing you dynamic women, and this woman is no exception. We are chilling today in South Florida in a place called Butterfly World. Did you know there was a butterfly world? Well, now you know it's at Trade Winds Park here in Coconut Creek. We're lakeside, just bringing the positive vibe as we just chat. You know how we like to chat. So be sure to like, comment, and share the video if you like empowerment empowerment of women. So without further ado, I have a woman here who is getting ready to take on one of the biggest challenges of her life. She is really trying to change her community, and I admire her so much. I was like, yo, you got to come on so that people can know who you are. Her name is Miss Ruby Green, and she's running for Public Defender of Brown. Broward, hey, Broward County, y'all make her feel welcome, make her, hey, yeah, make her feel welcome. We're just gonna get to know you, and I love the fact that you're passionate about criminal justice, you're passionate about seeing change in the American criminal justice system. So if you have comments about the American criminal justice system, please leave them, please leave questions. Even if we don't answer them now, we'll go back and make sure we answer your comments. So what's up, Ruby Green? Hi. How you doing? I'm great. I, I'm so excited this moment finally came. We was like playing tag and all the scheduling and all that. She's more busy than I am. Uh, hello, she's everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So we're both a attorneys in full disclosure. I know Ruby um, kind of at a distance, but I, I was like, yo, we got to spend the time so that people can understand why it is that you're trying to pursue um, this honorable position and why it is that you would be the best woman for the job. So um, let the people know who you are. Who is Ruby Green? Hi, everyone. I am Ruby Green. I am your next Broward County Public Defender oh, okay. starting August 25th, 2020. And I am currently a assistant public defender in the career criminal unit at the Broward County Public Defender's Office. I was born and raised in Broward County. Oh, cool. I am from Pompano Beach, Cayuga right. City. Pompano. Represent, <laughs> All right. right. For those of you who don't know, Pompano got a lot of pride up here. <laughs> and in Fort Lauderdale area, it's not Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> it's Pompano. So just yes. so you know. <laughs> yes. And we call it Pino. Or oh. for those who are in Cayuga City, we say Cayuga City. Exactly. Not Collier, not Collier City. No. Kaya. Okay. And Wonderful. Um, yeah, that's where I grew up. I went to Coral Springs High School. Shout mm -hmm. out for the Colts. Yeah. Uh, then I went to Florida State University. Go Knowles. Uh oh. And <laughs> go Haters, but we still, it's all love. It's all love. It's all love. You know, I don't discriminate. No. <laughs> Um, and then from Florida State University, I actually ended up going to law school at the Florida Coastal School of Laws in Jacksonville, Florida, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. I found the love of being a public defender. So, awesome. Yeah. So you make it all the way from, uh, excuse me, Pompano, Collier City, yeah. all the way up to Tallahassee first. Right. How was your experience at Florida State? Oh, I love Florida State. Uh, you want to know what? Yes. Um, Prior to even going to Florida State, I went to Coral Springs High School and I was working at McDonald's. Mm. I didn't even know that I was going to go to college because I didn't have anyone in my life that had gone to college. Mm. My mom didn't graduate school. She didn't even make it to high school. She mm. had to drop out in eighth grade to take care of home. Wow. And my dad, he never graduated uh, high school either. And I didn't really have anyone in my life. I have. 15 brothers and sisters. No way. Yeah, yeah, Ruby, I didn't yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. Ruby, you got a lot of, a lot of Yes, I, I do. I know, the older, I know the older generation, like my mom them was yeah. 20. Right. But mm -hmm. I don't know anybody in our generation who's 15. Here I am. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so that must be interesting, finally dynamic. What number are you? It, I'm the fourth youngest. Fourth youngest. Okay, wow. Yes. So, yeah. what was that like growing up with all the brothers and sisters? Well, okay, there's a significant age gap in between most of us. All right, so I probably only grew up with five of us at the time. In at your the home. time okay, in I my it. home, I know right. how that goes. Some of them off, and then some of them are just right. coming up. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So I even grew up with some nephews and nieces who were like, age. like you were the same age, yeah, and they yeah. were like. I'm your auntie. I'm your auntie. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not. I'm your auntie. <laughs> you know, I would go to school. But we both eight, year, eight years old. Yes. So we're, right? I love it. I love yeah. it. So it must an interesting, very um communal sense of family. Right. right. I love that. Right. So mom and dad didn't do it, but here you are. Yeah. I yeah. love it. So what encouraged you then to go? Oh. Who encouraged you to go? What changed that trajectory for you? Well, you want to know what? I lived in a box house mm. and they used to call our house the hot box. Mm. It was literally like 490 square feet with all of us living in a house. Um, my oh. mama even took in some of my nieces and nephews at some points. And um, I was going to work at McDonald's 
and first of all I had this guy that came to the drunk drive-thru who really wanted like a junior bacon cheeseburger and I was just like you know telling him nicely hey we don't have that Wendy's does you know <laughs> this and is he <laughs> got so upset he got so upset he came to the drive-thru window and I was just like my nice bubbly self like hi sir you yeah. go to Wendy's yes. or do you want to order something from here? <laughs> and he was just like trying to spit in my face. He, uh, yeah, he um, got so upset with me. He tried to punch me through the window. And so my manager had to come and like shut the window, like lock it and try and prevent this man from trying to hit me. Uh, and um, then he went to the trunk of his car. I'm like, oh Lord, he's gonna grab a gun. Wow. But he didn't grab a gun. You know, he, he grabbed one of the most important things that I think that we lack, which is a master's degree. He what? grabbed that out of his trunk and he slammed that in my face. And what? he was just like, you're gonna be nothing. You're gonna be nothing but a two cent. And he oh. said the, the, the W-H-O-R-E wow. word. Wow. 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 But I'm gonna say two cent hooker. Yeah. Wow. Living on the streets with 10 kids. And I was just wow. like, oh wow, like, you know. That was, hold up, pause, 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 pause. So I can't imagine as a young person, somebody, that first of all is traumatic anyway, in the right. society we live in with somebody popping off on you. Right. So I can't imagine how crazy I would feel just in that moment. Right. So on top of that, to add insult to injury, to say, you're not gonna be anything, you're yeah. a nobody, look at me, I have a master's, that means I'm better than you, right. is what he was saying. Right. And probably you being a woman, you being a woman of color, meant that you were automatically gonna be right. nobody. Right. What? What, what irritated me wow. the most was that wow, wow. he was a black man. No way. Yeah. No I, way. Yeah. So do you man. notice that some of the most random stuff can be really formative for yeah. people that you wouldn't right. even imagine? Right. So that made you feel how? What did that, how did that spur you? I, you know, I didn't know really at the time, I didn't know how to feel because I was pretty ignorant. I didn't know what college was. I didn't know. I literally thought that McDonald's was going to be my life. I thought that McDonald's wow. was going to be my saving grace. Wow. I was already offered like a manager position at McDonald's wow. and my manager was just like, oh, you know, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. I was just like, oh, wow. And it wasn't until I went to school mm. and my guidance counselor, she was like going around to all the seniors and she was like, um, you know, like basically seeing what they were going to do yeah, yeah, after yeah. they graduate. Yeah, yeah. And so she came to me and she was just like, you made, you know, really good grades. Are you going to go to college? I was just like, no, what? I work at McDonald's. Wow. And she was just like, well, you know, you need to, you know, check think this out. That. You need to think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, I will. And then one day I went back to McDonald's on shift and a lady came through the drive through and I was my happy-go-lucky, you yeah, know, yeah, self, yeah. bubbly self. Yeah. And she goes, oh my goodness, like you are too good to be here. Like wow. you're gonna, you're destined for greatness. Wow. And I was just like, what? Speak a word, speak what? a word. I'm like, what? Speak a word to young keep... people, yeah. <laughs> Who am I? I'm here trying to give you a good cheeseburger. Yes. Why, what do you see in me? Imagine. Right. Right. And had you ever heard that before? No. Wow. No. So this is a couple, McDonald's was doing it for you. Yeah, First McDonald's all, was doing it. Just allowing people to come. Right. <laughs> kind of even in passing to yeah. say this or say that or do something crazy. Right. And then here you are. It made you think though. Right. So and you decided you ultimately, yes, I'm going to apply. Right. Had anyone in your family ever applied to college before? No. What? I'm a so first you, generation college Wow. Student. For real, right, for right. real. Right. And a lawyer. And a lawyer. How about yes, that? Yeah. So you get to Florida State after all this kind of inner tumult and figuring out, dang, I could probably do this. Yep. And you have a, it, was it easy for you? Was it difficult for you? What was your experience there? It was very difficult. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it was a adjustment because I was so used to having my sisters with yeah. me. Yeah. Having an entire family. family. Right. <laughs> So, um, and I knew nothing about it. So yeah. I literally- How to be in college. Right. Yeah. I yeah. went to I went to college with trash bags, y'all. Wow. Um, wow. My roommate wow. clowned me. Wow. She um, talked bad about me, basically wow. talking about my trash bags yes. and how I came Who to college. Who is this little girl with? with right. No luggage. Right. No boxes. Right. Everything in the trash bags. Right. Wow. And you want to know what? The funny thing was, like, she had so much stuff to say about me and my trash bags and- you know, like some some people don't take the time to get to know yeah, other people absolutely. and other people of other races, right. and you need to take that. I think we need to have that dialogue that we need to come together absolutely. and learn about each other. Absolutely. Because when she was talking, she was going through some things herself. Like wow. she was going through some stuff. Her father had lost his job, and you want to know what? Something that stuck with me: the differences between you know when we lose our job and then yeah. when she, her father lost her job. She said. 
Oh, we had to downgrade vehicles. We had oh, to get a Lexus. Imagine, imagine. I was like, a Lexus? <laughs> that's a luxury vehicle Exactly, still. You know, exactly. that's different. So it's a whole different, I, I love college for that reason. And right. sometimes we have a whole debate on whether college is worth the money. Right. I have various opinions on that. Sometimes right. I'm happy I went. Sometimes I'm like, can I get a right. refund? <laughs> However, um, for the most part, the perspective it gives you right. by opening you up to different cultures, different right. races, different backgrounds, right. different economic backgrounds, right. to let you know there's people living a whole different yep. way than you. Yep. And you thought you had a good <laughs> fun with yourself, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden it's like, whoa, there's a whole other way of thinking. Right. So how were you able, what, what tools did uh, you use to make sure that you got through? I can imagine when people don't know or have anybody right. to kind of show them how to be successful in college, right. often they don't uh, uh, graduate. How, what ensured or what helped you uh, propel you towards graduation? Um, I would say God. And sheer determination. Oh, I can already tell. God, I yes. can already tell. And determination. You have to have a strong mind. Yeah. It, there are going to be constant roadblocks. Yeah. At every single point of your life. There's wow. not going to be a time in your life where you're going to be like, oh, everything no is challenge. just great, Absolutely. great, 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 great. Nothing can go wrong. Absolutely. And that's not true. Yeah. You know, there's always something. Even if it's a little something, there's always something. I got pregnant. Really? In college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first year. Wow. I, I graduated early, by the way. So my first year. It can be counted as you can say my second if you want. Ah, but yes, I graduated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but my first year, I got pregnant, and I felt so bad about myself wow. because here I am mm -hmm. coming from nothing. Here, right. you know, yeah. being able to go to college right. like no one else has done in right. my family, yeah. and then I'm pregnant. Now I, I, I disappointed everyone. Yeah, I'm a failure. Yeah. Wow. How do you yeah. get past that? I, I don't even know. Yo, yeah, wow. Because I, I think a lot of women experience this. Especially um, people who become mommies earlier. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of guilt even beyond. Right. You can literally, I, I hear people saying that, you know, um, I, when I, I'm a teenage mom. No, baby, you're 35. Right. You're not a teenage mom. Right. But no matter what, it's like the stigma yeah. or this, um, after a while, it becomes self imposed. Right. Because yes, people do put it on you and try to give you a label. But yeah. look, at, look at where the label is now. Yeah. And I just want to kind of use you as a, a testimony yeah. to that. You're the first in your family of 15 to go to college and law school. Now she wants to be one of the top lawyers in her county. So let's get to that. Like, what causes a Ruby Green to get off the sideline? Not that she was on the sideline. That's not even accurate because she's always been very active in the community. Let me correct right. the record. But how? What, what inspires you now to say, it's my time to give back as the public defender of Broward County? Well, so many things had transpired in the course of me working at the Broward County Public Defender's Office. Uh, I became a supervisor at a young age. I became chief of misdemeanor uh -oh. at a young age. What, what does that mean for people who are not in the legal profession? What does that mean? So the, the chief is basically the, the top. Right. Hello. Um, yeah, you assign like, cases. I assign cases. You, yeah, yeah. I um, train the attorneys and I basically supervise them, even though I had uh, a couple of supervisors underneath me mm -hmm. to assist yeah, wow. in what I was doing and what I wanted to happen. It's a big and, deal, guys. Right. It's a big deal. Hello. So you were the chief. Yes. Wow. And what did it teach you? What did that experience kind of expose you to? Transparency. Mm. I think that that's important when it comes to being at a job mm -hmm. and knowing what people want you know, and, and knowing how for, you know, knowing what people want in order to keep their passion about their mm -hmm. jobs, because mm -hmm. we all have to work yeah. in order to be able to provide for ourselves. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. we don't want to be in a position where we are hating what we do every single uh, day. Uh, okay. So was a lot of that happening at the PD's office, at the public defender's office? Yes. And people were just there because what? Yeah. It was just going through the motions. Nah. Going nah. through the motions, yeah. right? So how did you change that or how did you try to address that? Or what was the strategy for you? Well, the strategy for me was making sure that we trained the attorneys and making sure that I was there to assist them because okay. that was important. Right. At the PD's office, uh, a lot of the complaints was that we are, we have do nothing supervisors, right? Mm. And so do nothing supervisors is, is that you have- A lot of people trainings. can relate. Yeah. <laughs> Your supervisor sit back and you like, wait a minute, yeah. I thought you was super, no, yeah. no, I'm doing it? Okay, yeah. good, okay, fine. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and that consisted of everything. Everything. like we had the high case loads you mm -hmm. know we were in court every day we were what we call is in the trenches right right and no one wants to feel as if they're disposable by them, and by themselves and by themselves yeah, yeah. and so that's what I looked to change at the office as soon as I became chief yeah. I made sure that I was in the courtrooms I made sure that the attorneys got the best training mm -hmm. that they could imagine get. <laughs>
<laughs> these are people and explain what public defenders do for people who are watching from around the world yeah. and they know the American system offers you everybody said if you don't can't afford attorney yeah. uh, one will be given to you right? right what is the role of the public defenders office so basically what public defenders are is that we represent those who what we call indigent mm -hmm. and um, it's another word for poor right or below the poverty line yeah. who cannot afford representation in criminal cases right so and economically that, disadvantaged defendants right. or people who have been charged with crimes if you cannot get a lawyer in the United States system one right. can be given to you if you qualify correct all right so a lot of people like to say that the PD does not treat the person who is their client as an attorney in the private sector would is that true what's your opinion on that I believe that that's not true I have been a public defender for at least 10 years and I've been in a situation where I've seen privates um, you know do the same thing private like, attorneys right mm -hmm. private attorneys mm -hmm. do the same thing like and for the most part there are some times where private attorneys will have a case for years and yeah. not do anything on the case mm -hmm. and then here we are it lands in our hands and yeah. it seems as if oh we're the big old bad pds right. we don't do anything right when you was paying your money right and that attorney was not helping Hello. you sad sad but true not all attorneys yeah. but some yeah so what is the biggest change you would make if you were elected in august 2020 yeah we starting early um, what I know people talk about systemic racism and how the system is unfair are there changes that you can make for, from the top or what are your plans if elected as the public defender of Broward County I have basically four major plans uh, the first one is to dispel the public defender myth there are a lot of clients that we have that you know Suzette was just talking to you about uh, that are afraid to be represented by public defenders and we have some phenomenal attorneys and I tell you when I get emails every single week up as to how many people have gotten not guilty verdicts I mean it just warms my heart because you know that people are fighting for other people they're to doing their job their guys right, they're doing, they're doing their job be. right not guilty right. wow wow, right. wow 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 and the second thing is is I wanted to um, dismiss this revolving door so whenever someone gets out of custody uh, we always see a recurring pattern that they come back to us um, it, because they pick up new charges mm -hmm. and it's because we have lack of resources every day I, I seem as if um, we are getting uh, you know companies and programs that are like oh we can't work with you guys anymore we can't do this we can't do that and so we need mental health treatment we need yeah. substance abuse treatment we need to make sure that they have drug uh, job placement yeah. and housing Absolutely. in order to make sure that we are reducing crime and reducing recidivism at the same time absolutely so go ahead sorry and and, mm -hmm. and you know and my second one is it is very important to me because I know a lot of public defenders feel as if uh, they are disposable at the office and morale is very low and we can't keep good quality representation at the public defender's office on a constant basis we yeah. have a high turnover rate right. I want to decrease that I want to make sure that I fight for funding for the public defender's office to make sure that they make livable wages mm -hmm. at, for the past five years I've been working about three jobs just to be able to support myself and my family and no one should have to do that in one, south florida it's expensive south, don't come right. here don't come here <laughs> it's already very expensive the housing market is crazy right. plus we're not making livable wages i agree right. with you right. wow wow and, and lastly i do uh, I really really want to promote criminal justice reform mm. we've heard about the sentencing disparities here it's uh, blatantly obvious uh, we heard about driving while black we've heard about so many issues that our criminal justice system has and we need to work with these systems and fight this this system uh, that needs to be changed yeah. Yeah. at this point so yeah. that's why well, I know this sister has seen it from the inside so she knows what she's talking about and I know it can be difficult last question um, for a woman to run for such an office when you see public defenders yes there are women that get elected this is a big county yeah. um, over I don't know how much million right now 1 point something million 1.9 1. 1. 1. 1. million um, yeah something like yeah that. something like that over a million people live um, in the greater Fort Lauderdale area so um, what is it that you're gonna you think being a woman um, does in terms of your approach is there any distinction is there any limitation is there any uh, a difference of challenge what what is the way that you will um, approach your job do you think that will be maybe influenced by your gender I think that women always get it done mm. we are resilient um, when a man wakes up he can just say oh I'm gonna run for office but when we wake up, we have many things to consider. Right. We have to consider how is it going to, you know, affect our family. Yeah. You know, what are people going to say? Oh, I I'm too young. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
oh, I need to wait my turn. What? Wow. Wow. Like these are things that I have to go through on a constant daily basis right. um, in order to decide what I need to do. But I just know that I am the best person for the job. I've, I've done this for over 10 years. Yeah. I have been in a position where I've worked multiple jobs, including being president of organizations, being members of organizations. And I'm not just saying being a member of an organization because in order to be a member for me, you have to be active. Yeah. And yeah. so that's what I believe in. And I believe that I'm gonna make a change because I believe that our justice system deserves it. Our, the attorneys and the staff at the public defender's office deserves it. And the clients deserve it. I love. Can y'all hear her passion? Change from the inside out. I am so proud of you. Thank you. If I never tell you that again, I am so, so proud. <laughs> hey. I love seeing women who are striving to change and shake it up yeah. a little bit. And yeah. she, can, can you tell that she's a little bit passionate about this? I want to thank my <laughs> special guest, Miss <laughs> Ruby Green. If you, if people want to find you on social media, where can they find you? You can find me at VoteRubyGreen.com. You can find me at VoteRubyGreen on Instagram and on Twitter and Ruby Lenore Green on Facebook. All right. Love Uno. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, comment, like, and share. It's your girl, Suzette Speaks. I'll see you next Saturday. Bye. Take care.